Yes, hello good people. Welcome back to another fine example of Good Games presented by Funcase, also known as GG's with Funcase. Welcome back. Episode 4, where has the time gone? I know I said this last episode and I'm probably going to say it every episode since. <laughs> but I can't believe we're on episode 4 already. It's been one month. Every Wednesday on the NACL platform. Thank you guys so much for giving the platform. Uh, today... The uh, the guest is a lovely, lovely man. You're gonna see him. And you're gonna think, "Wow, what a striking, what a striking person I've seen in my eyes." He went from from lovely man to the hottest man in dubstep. Easily, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna mention no names who should be contesting. But hey, you can come see him for yourself. My man Jimmy, also known as AFK. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny I mention this because you and, and we're gonna start straight in with this. By the way, is your transformation? I'm sure you probably expected this when I said I was gonna do a slight, you know, sort of level little chat with you. But let's let's start before we start gaming. I want to know about your transformation. You went from a man that sort of you know was just living cool comfortably, and you went to hunkiest man in the world. What happened? Oh my god. <laughs> um. I don't know. I got sober, lost 60 pounds. Damn. Um, just trying to be more healthy and not destroy my body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, was there a turning point, or was it just like you just you just woke up one day and was like, you know what, I'm things need to to change. No, there was a turning point. I was like pretty bad. I was like playing a show in Montreal, Canada. Yeah. And like. I came back from the show and I was like throwing up blood. Oh wow! Like, yeah, <laughs> Jesus. it was bad. I was just like laying on the bathroom floor all night, puking blood. And wow. So yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would have changed if I hadn't have hit rock bottom like that. So was I it, guess it was, was a it thing. a self thing or was it like? Because I know you're married. Was it part you know the wife and part yourself or was it literally just you going? Okay, this needs to stop. Was there a team effort involved? I mean, yeah, I mean, she definitely supported me and she, I mean, she never had a problem with alcohol, but she yeah. would drink occasionally, but she like quit drinking and, you know, like while I got that shit under control and so, yeah, she helped me a lot, but. Yeah. Well, man, that's amazing because I, I have no restriction for myself when it comes to like eating chocolate, <laughs> donuts, you know, everything that I shouldn't be doing, I'm doing. And for you to have that kind of restriction is amazing and you've done very well for yourself and i'd just like to say i'm very proud of you for that by the way because as you know you know i was there in the in the days when you know your drinking was a bit more prominent and oh, yeah. to see you, you looking you so amazing dude i did but to see you looking so amazing is amazing so from a personal level i'm very proud of you but hey i want to ask you afk you've probably been told this you know, story a million times in interviews, but uh, since this is GG and we've got AFK, we might as well bring, break this down. <laughs> is there, is it just gaming? Is there a gaming reason for it or is there something deeper? What, the, the, the name, name AFK, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was originally just away from keyboard because I was a nerd. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, I used to, when I was drinking, I used to always like jokingly say it meant alcoholic fat kid. Oh, wow. Which <laughs> I didn't I know that. I wasn't lying. Yeah. So. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's oh, yeah. crazy. All now right. we're back to just the gaming. Well, on a nerdy level, um, we are, of course, with, with GG with Funcase, we are gaming today. And today's game of choice, which, by the way, I, I pr provided to you. What is today's game? Overwatch. Lovely. Which I'm, I am not against at all because I'm a very casual Overwatch player. Very intense game, of course. I'm sure most people will know about Overwatch. But um, the last two guests I had on, which was uh, Sweet Tooth... Um, and uh, Neonix, they both chose Apex, and I am not good at that game. I can't lie. I My aim yeah. is shocking. Me either. That you game's like... I mean, I'm alright at it, but the time to kill is like way too long in that game. And I like games where you can just one-shot someone in the head. <laughs> True. You cannot that, do that. That being Apex. said, I'm not entirely sure I believe you, because I know you're insane at FPS games. Is Apex one of those games you find... Okay, here, here for me, I was saying this in the last episodes, is that Apex, for some reason, I, my aim in COD is good. My aim in Valorant uh -huh. is good. My aim in CSGO is okay. But Apex, I can't nail the aim. For some reason, the aiming doesn't feel right to me. I don't know if you get the same thing. 
Yeah, sometimes it's like, I don't know. I don't know if it's because the guns are projectile and not hit scan or what it is, but mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely yeah. notice it. Do we, by the way, do we even have each other added on <laughs> Overwatch? <laughs> yeah. We do? Well, okay. I, I, I'm, oh, I'm hiding offline. Oh, because... okay. Okay. Let me, let me invite you in. See you in a, are you sauce? Yeah. <laughs> This okay. was my. I used to be obsessed with this game. Like I had like five accounts. I was like masters, almost grandmaster. Wow. But Jesus. This was my Smurf account. Okay. Which is now my main account. <laughs> It'd be like that. I've got. I'm, I feel like I'm getting to that level of Rocket League at this point, where I'm because I. It's weird, isn't it? Because when you play with a when you play with a Smurf account, there's a level of chill where you don't care as much. But for some reason, that oh, makes yeah. you a better gamer. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess the pressure's off because you're not worried about your rank. So. Yeah, I think so. I think, but it's it's weird, isn't it? Because subconsciously, oh, I've got. A, I'm gonna open this loot box. Subconsciously, like you know, when that turns into a main, it's not gonna be your better account anymore. But I don't know if there's something in your head that goes, well, if I suck on it, it doesn't matter. I'll go back to the main. But then the main becomes a Smurf. I don't know. It's like a weird thing, isn't it? I would have thought. It has to be some kind of mental thing because it does work like that. <laughs> you okay? So we used to play uh, PUBG together. Do you still play PUBG? Yeah, we started playing it again like a month ago, I guess. Oh wow! Because there's like so many cheaters on COD now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. True. Yeah. It is a bit, yeah. <laughs> and PUBG like made you put in your phone number. What? And they <laughs> yeah, and they text they text you like this thing, and then I guess if you get banned, they. <laughs> If you get banned for cheating, you would have to like change your actual phone number and shit to get another account. So <gasps> there's way less cheaters. <laughs> well, I had no idea that was a thing. I have that goes to show how, how long I haven't played that game. To be fair, that game wasn't really f for me. I think I like the idea of the game, but I don't know. I think the mechanics and the speed of it didn't feel too good until Call of Duty brought it in, and then it felt better yeah. for me. I think personally, so. Um, I'm gonna go tank on this one. I don't know where you wanna go. I'm an tanky boy. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna go Reinhardt. Reinhardt's my Reinhardt or Orissa are my mains. Wait, is it Orissa? It is Orissa? Yeah. I keep I keep I keep meddling her name up with uh with the Or Orissa from League of Legends, which I don't know if you play or not. I don't think you do, do you? I used to. I was not ever very good. Did you actually so. used to play that game, dude? Come. Come back to the to the to the show, to the mess that is League of Legends. I, <laughs> I might be better at it now. I don't know. I used to like. I don't know. Maybe it's because I used to drink and play video games all the time. But I used to get really mad at that game. Yeah. The thing I don't about, really get mad at games anymore. Well, the thing about that game is, it's like I, you, there's a level of understanding you have to have before being any decent at that game. Like you can you can be like, oh, that ability does that. But when you realize that ability. Yeah. In certain situations, with certain items, do certain things. It becomes a whole different process, and then you become more. You could become stronger. You start learning the game better. I've even started watching like YouTube channels of League of Legends players to get better. I don't know why, but I've, I've, this is the level I got to now where I actually care, <laughs> which is a problem. Did you, did you ever play Hots? Hots. Yeah, Heroes of the Storm. Oh no, I didn't. No, I know a few people. Have, wait, I think. Do you still play that? Yeah, like me and Wooly and Company used to play that game. It's like ca it's like League, but way more casual. Yeah, I didn't. I think Wooly tried to convince me to come play. I haven't even thought about playing it yet. I don't know. Is it free? Yeah, it's free. Oh, I don't. Man. I don't know if anyone even plays it anymore. But it was always pretty fun because it's like all Overwatch, Diablo, Starcraft yeah. characters. I feel like they probably all migrated to League of Legends anyway. I mean, that game is supposed to... Yeah, I mean, probably. so many people have predicted that game to die, because it. but for some reason it just keeps floating around, I don't know. But Hey, come come play, it's fine. You can come play with us. It's fine. <laughs> oh man, it's been a while since I played Overwatch, actually. I don't know how my aim is on here. It might, might be different to the last time I played it. People are probably going to watch this going, what the hell are you doing? I'm just going to keep you alive. Or try to. <laughs> oh wait, are you play you're playing healer, right? Yeah, I'm playing Ana. Oh no, I got eliminated. I was trying to uh, counter push the Reinhardt, but uh, yeah, it didn't go well. Leash. Ah oh, damn. So AFK, the project. 
Is there what is AFK beyond the music? What is the brand? What are you trying to portray with that with that brand? Or is it just a man making music he loves? Is it as simple as that? I guess that's been something I've tr like tried to figure out for a long time. That's kind of hard, I guess. Yeah, that is most definitely the hardest part of of being an artist is finding a good brand and running with it and showing people that you have you know the intuition to be something you know more than just the music to be an image to be a profile and something that people can latch onto as a theme so but yeah i mean we're living in an age right now where branding is the probably the most important thing in music now which is honestly crazy to me because there's there's some artists who have some okay music but they're killing it because their brand is just insane like yeah. which is which is amazing and obviously you're you're a, you're a good friend of um of sudden death as well so it's like you know that man is leading on all fronts really oh, musically really? <laughs> and image so like is it is it tough being around people like that who have nailed their image or is it even more inspiring to you really? i think it's inspiring to me because I, I i think one day i'll be able to figure it out it's just i don't know yeah it's kind of I tough. I think it's also like finding an artist that you can, like a visual artist that you can work with that understands like, you know, what you want to an, to the extent of like how, like Danny's stuff is crazy and yeah. it seems like Safe Haven who does most of his stuff like right. gets it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, there's there's artists and and people who have uh, visions and stuff, but when you start getting people who understand branding, and you get teams that understand. You know how to expand on an idea you know beyond because one one mind is not obviously it's never going to be enough you know you'll always, you'll always have the idea to do um more with a with a team of people which is uh i think is what sudden death has right i don't i think yeah it? yeah so i mean you know is it you know is it not too many cooks cook, spoil the broth doesn't really work out in music i think i think there's a, there's a lot to be gained from a lot of imaginations in one place but um yeah, I mean, do you ever share ideas with him about what you want to do with yourself, or do you keep it kind of quiet, or are you still you just don't know what to do, where to do, things like that? I've I've been talking to this one artist, Indifferent. Do you know? Who, have you ever heard of him? Indifferent, no. I don't know. I like his style, but we've been going back and forth with ideas, so hopefully we'll get it. Do you, uh, I mean, I mean, you know, obviously you have the AFK brand. Is gaming? Or the the image of gaming, or the eight bit logo, anything like that. Are those things that you've already thought about and tried to ex and try to do? Have you done yeah, things I that you don't, you don't feel I like they've worked? Or? Like the, I used to do like the eight bit thing, but I don't know. I've never really had a logo that I really liked. So yeah. Again, though, it's tough, isn't it? Because well, you're yeah. in an age of people, you know, having every kind of logo. I mean, right now, obviously, the death metal logo style is a very popular which uh, you don't want to be you know a part of the sheep but you know they're cool looking logos but it's just i don't know it's a weird one i mean for me personally i fell i fell into the image and branding side of it kind of accidentally like it didn't i didn't plan to be this this guy with a mask on my my whole thing was a, it's actually pretty much a complete accident so i've been kind of lucky to be able to expand on the idea of a mask and, and what to do with it but it's it's kind of tough, isn't it? It's, what the frick? My Q missed. Wow. My Q missed very badly. Um, but yeah, it's it's just tough. I mean, it's just a lot of. I don't know if a lot of people watching this who aren't involved in the music scene really think about what it takes to be a really, you know, prominent artist in a genre. Because you think about all the biggest artists in the world, like Marshmello, for instance, who. <laughs> For a lot of uh, brands, you know, in in uh, in the music scene, magazines, forums, blogs, everything have all said that he's probably the biggest artist on the planet, which is crazy to me because you think of someone like Calvin Harris, for instance, who, you know, in essence is music because his brand is really just looking good, isn't it? Really, because he's been an, he's been a Calvin Klein model, but he writes EDM, really good EDM, which everyone can enjoy. But he's had more num he's had more number ones in a decade than Michael Jackson. But Marshmello is bigger than him, according to a lot of places like Forbes and and things like that. And that's branding, isn't it? That's just yeah. what it boils down to. Because Marshmello has taken every element that's successful in branding in every sense of the word, like Fortnite music, everything like that. He's he mashed it all together into one super beast. And it's like, how do yeah, you compete with that? 
you know like it's crazy like a ton of my like friends back home like their kids like know who marshmallow is and, like, <laughs> it's like yeah it's just but it, it but again like he he i think if marshmallow stopped writing music tomorrow completely he could live off being a brand f easily for the rest of his life like no question <laughs> no question yeah. it's crazy and and it's it's hard because like you know, I, I was talking to the, uh, talking to Doctor P about this actually. And, fu and fun fact, uh, f funny mentioned Doctor P. Uh, my label DPMO has a, a new single out with this boy over here, AFK, called. Uh... Wait, what is it? is it called? Destroyed Destruction. Wait, why have I forgotten the yeah, name of it? It's called Destroyed. Destroyed. Yeah, for some reason I had Destruction in my name. Uh, yeah, Destroyed. Very sick tune. Actually, it reminds me of an old Doctor P with an AFK twist. It really does. And yeah. I think for you, because I know you've been a fan of Doctor P, you've probably enjoyed that element. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, how like the hell did that collab come about, though? Because I feel like you guys probably don't talk that often. I, I could be wrong, but... We met on, like... Hold on, wait. Will you pause the queue? And mm. I'm going to play DPS so we don't get shit on it. Ah, okay. Yeah, no worries. Um. Oh, wait. How do I... Wait, how do I... Oh, there we go. I think cancel. you just press cancel. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong Sorry. bit. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go tank again. Um, so, yeah, I guess I met him, like on a bus back from Lost Lands. It was just like me and him in the transport. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, we just talked for a little bit and then he emailed me. I don't know, it was like maybe a year after me and Carbon song Boss came out and yeah. he liked that song. Yeah. And he was just like, I reckon we should do a collab. And I like shit my pants. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's weird because that it reminds it's kind of weird to think that like that's that boss track that you did with Carbon kind of does have an element of Dr. P in it with a squeal screech oh, yeah. sort of For element sure. and I and I can imagine Dr. P hearing that thinking that kind of sounds like something I would maybe dabble in and then he probably thought let's let's do a track and then and then old school Dr. P suddenly turns up and then AFK puts a few angry twists in it and suddenly you've got a banger so yeah it was nice to hit I mean when that when that came in my inbox I was like hello <laughs> since when we, since when have those guys been talking? But yeah, it's good stuff. I like mean, are we, you, I mean, musically, are you writing that sort of stuff at the moment, or are you writing a whole mixture of stuff, or are you writing more boss style stuff, or I'm like all over the place. I'll send you. I have like I don't know, like twelve songs done. Yeah. Which, like the last, I don't know, the last two or three years, I didn't finish very much music, mm. and like I got sober, and honestly, I kind of had to like relearn how to produce because just a just, just a th just a hard reset essentially not like it's not like i like forgot how to do everything but like being like drunk was such a like integral part of my process yeah. it feels like yeah yeah i, I totally I, understand what I you're saying to, like yeah. figure it out again yeah yeah I, I i think isn't that is it because it takes so it takes so much of your mental ability and concentration from drinking like things like that it becomes uh like your your focus sort of is taken from other elements and put into that so when it's you're, you're mentally taxed whenever you drink and obviously drinking you know yeah. you feel like you feel like utter crap when you finish drinking anyway so that can't help but um yeah yeah i mean do you feel do you feel like you have a nailed down sound or do you feel like you haven't got anything nailed down you just do things here and there or it's weird because it feels like i have like like two or three sounds that i genuinely like genuinely go for mm. i don't know it's like maybe whatever mood i'm in but there's like the high squealy annoying shit and then like, <laughs> like darker like reesey kind of stuff yeah and then i don't know like annoying hip-hop remixes like that chain hang low song with grizzly oh yeah oh yeah that was with you wasn't it i forgot about that for some reason i've only ever remembered it to be him Jeebus. Yeah. The days, dude. Man. Man, that's, yeah, that's a really... How, wh what year did that song come out? Is that a 16 song? 13. Was it that old? Holy yeah. crap, dude. That's a long time. Somebody <laughs> stole that song on TikTok and, like, it has, like, 100 million plays and they sell it on iTunes and shit under huh? a different name. Really? Yeah. How is that it's possible? crazy. I have no idea. Jesus. Have you, I mean, like, when was your, what year was your first release? Because to feel, to feel like, to think about 2013, I don't even remember the first time I met you, but, like, 
I mean, I don't remember um, you being around since 2013, so to hear that, maybe you've probably been around longer. The f I guess 2011 or 12, like the first tour I ever went on was 2012. It was like me, Delta Heavy, Bear Noise, and that sick. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I guess my first EP came out like right before that, so. Wow. I'm old. Wait, what year was that again? 2012. Really? So that would have been your first, your first uh, entry point into the into the world of uh, dubstep. Yeah. Welcome to the cool club. <laughs> Did you have any influences when you first started doing dubstep? In like in 2012, was there anyone you listened to? Well, wow, I want to I want to be as good as that guy, or he influences me, or anything like that. Well, like I started producing in like 2007, like oh, wow. Electro oh, House yeah. and Fidget House and like. I didn't even know what dubstep was. I hated drum and bass. <laughs> oh, really? No. Uh, yeah. It was like trance and electro house was the shit I liked. And then I went and saw 16 bit. Oh. And I was like, what the fuck is this? I want to make whatever this is. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's definitely the first reaction you get listening to 16 bit. Yeah, he played like. It was just the guy who's moody good. Um, Jason. Now, but no, no, not Jason. Uh, the other one, yeah, I know what I mean. He played like that Black Books Dr. P song. Yeah, and, RSK. And got to know Flux like years before they came out. And I was just like, all right, I'm making whatever that is now from now on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, 16 bit, legendary. One of those names that no one really ever forgets in dubstep, even if they've become new in dubstep. I feel like 16 bit have just never gone away. There's a lot of demand for them to come back, but I feel like Mo Moody Good, who, by the way, if, if you're watching this, don't know, Moody Good is from 16 bit, it's one half of 16 bit. But uh, that element, that, that weird sort of different element that came from 16 bit is essentially Moody Good. Like the other side did a lot more oh, of a darker yeah. sound so it's not like he's it's not like 16 bit aren't around it's just a, a more modern version of i feel like so yeah i agree i mean it still sounds like like moody good still sounds like 16 bit to me yeah i agree i've been saying this like to people for a while favorite favorite parts of 16 bit this is only a skirmish we're waiting for uh we've been waiting for yeah this is what happens when you pick d or when i pick yeah, DPS. yeah. You have to wait for everyone to come in. Because everyone wants to be DPS. Ooh! I actually hit him. Crazy. Um, yeah. What is the what is your favorite track you've ever written? Now, I'm going to assume it's not a boss. Because Hell I feel like no. when your tracks are your biggest, they become the tracks that you kind of dislike the most. Because they're yeah. the track you hear the most and you hear the most about. And it's like, oh, God, I'm so sick of that track. I get dude, the same thing about 50 caliber, quite honestly. Really? Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I wrote that track in in like August 2009. People are still like, "Yo, like, is 50 caliber your your favorite track?" I'm like, dude, the amount of times I've heard that track in 11, 12 years, like, dude, <laughs> it's not my favorite. I used to go, I used to go see Rusko like every time he would play in Dallas, and like, he played. What was that? Oh, dearie, dearie me. Oh, and really? He used to play that. I never knew that. Wizard Sleeve. Yeah. Wow. I never knew he played those. I, I mean, I'm, I think Wizard Sleeve. I knew he played, but and Fifty Caliber because he used to play it on B BBC Radio One. But I never knew he played Oh, dearie me, which makes sense because it had that bouncy edge that he's got. Yeah. Weird. Um, I don't know. I'll send you. There's like two new things that I've made that are probably up there. Yeah. For like my favorites. Okay. So, so, so some of your new stuff is your favorite stuff you've written. Yeah, because I feel like it's... Like, I know that sounds, like, corny, but I feel like it's actually, like... Like, all this stuff is, like, written 100%, like, sober. And, yeah. like, it feels like it's all, like, actually me. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I mean, it's... it's how do you explain, like, the mentality of how you write music... Um, to someone who doesn't because when you say like oh I wrote this and I put my heart and soul into it and I thought about every element and detail and you think I'm so proud of this track but they might go that track you wrote in 15 minutes when you were just make you know just doing it for fun and you thought it was it was terrible how do you explain to someone like how key mentality is in writing music like the, the music that comes out of you 
can be really good or really bad, or it can be really intricate, and it's always based on like how you feel as a person. Yeah. It's, it's so it's, it's so weird to explain to people, like, because it's just people probably don't think about it. They probably think we just sit in a room. <laughs> going, oh, what does this do? Oh, okay, I'll try this idea, and oh no, I hummed this in my phone earlier. Like, it's just not, it's not really that simple. But I don't know, it's crazy. It's just, it's just crazy to me because it's just music is so. Without being in the scene, music seems so simple. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. It, it just does. seems like a man in a room making music, and it's just there's so much like, even with pop music, people don't realize how much science is involved with pop music. It's really kind of crazy, like. The reason that pop music sticks in your head so crazily is because someone sat in a room and basically thought, what's the catchiest thing I can think of? And then they laid it down with a person who can sing beyond your limits. You know, it's like... Everything... Every every piece of music has the, their own way of making it and their own style. And sometimes a track can take you 20 minutes. Sometimes a track can take you 8 months. And it you'll never know. I, like, for instance, I sent my entire... Um, I think, I think it was, might have been 2012 or 13. I spoke to Skrillex for the first time in DM. He told me he was a fan of mine. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and then, like, he was like, send me everything. And I'm like, all right, cool, perfect. I consider it done. So I sent him my entire, everything I'd ever made from release to unrelease to dub plates to stuff that I'd written one minute of. And the tracks that I thought he might go, wow, that's insane, is the ones that I spent maybe two years writing because, you know, I wanted it to be details, things like that. And he picked out a track I wrote in 18 minutes for a joke. Oh my god. <laughs> and he was like, yo, this is insane. And and what's funny about that as well, which is something I always I always uh, point out to people, is that Skrillex, Skrillex's ability to pick out music styles that will probably be the next big thing. Because if you think about Jack Yu, how, how big of an impact that was and how much of a hole that filled at the time. He The track yeah. he picked out of mine was a grime track. And like grime was like not even a thing like it grime wasn't even big in the uk at the time it was still kind of the underground scene and then a, a, like a year or two later grime blew up and i'm like did he know this was gonna happen like wh what is this but uh i wrote that track in 18 minutes for for a laugh and he put he pointed out and it sometimes it's like the most organic ideas that just happen for fun that end up being the best tracks and a lot of people don't realize that that's a product of just being so good in the mental, you know, like being fresh and just enjoying yeah. yourself when doing it. And yeah, so I don't know if you get the same thing, but I mean, obviously, you know, with the new stuff, you're, as you're saying, but yeah. With Skrillex, it's crazy too that like, I, I feel like he like sometimes accidentally like, like it seems like, uh, what's that track that like all of Future Rhythm to me sounds like that one track that he made, what is it? Is it Moon by Power? Uh, like where he, where he oh, did the vocoding. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Chords. Yeah, that's interesting. I never thought about that. That's an interesting thing. I think he's got. I think he might be a wizard who knows yeah, the future. Like <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Crazy stuff, man. But but again, it's it's. Just, I'm just trying to explain something that I don't I don't think is explainable, quite honestly. But yeah. Oh my lord! I, this whole team wants me dead very badly. Oh, there it goes. I've been destroying people anyway. I mean, I've got nine kills. Okay. Lordy, lordy. What do you usually do on your uh, off time from music anyway? I mean, apart from gaming, I guess. Well, now I I go like camp. And go to like national parks and stuff. You go camping. Kind of like, yeah. Sick. Kind of like addicted to that now. Yeah. But again, like for, good for the mental. Healthy hobbies and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Actually, that makes sense because I see a lot of your pictures and you're you're outgoing places and doing stuff. So, <laughs> I always, I always actually, you know, it's weird. I always see your pictures and I think I should be doing that. I probably should be going out and doing stuff, but I'm indoors playing League of Legends, going, ah, you suck. So people who. You know, are probably about it's, ten years younger than me, honestly. But yeah, it's a lot easier though to do that kind of stuff in Colorado where I am now. <laughs> when like I used to be in Texas. And oh, you're in Colorado have, now. Or, oh, yeah. I thought you were in Texas still. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like moving here, like as corny as it sounds, kind of like saved my life. Yeah, <laughs> because it was just really easy to like get outside and do healthy stuff to 
keep my mind off of like drinking and shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I hear that. I hear that. Crazy. I had no idea. See, this is the, see, this is the thing that it's it's like you've done you've done so much. It's not even just a case of I stopped drinking. It's like I moved. I changed my my how I think. I you know I felt the need to be different. It was like loads of different elements brought it in instead of just being like I'm just gonna stop now. You know, because it should have been probably <laughs> essentially the easiest part of it. But that's great to hear though. I just wish I just wish as a person I had the restraint <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to not do gaming one day and just go out and do something that will probably be beneficial to me. You know, like sit-ups in a field or something. You know, like. I wish I had, I'm not saying that's what you do, but I'm saying like, you know, things that will benefit me as a person. I really feel like if I just spent like two hours running around that field, I'd probably be a lot, a lot healthier, <laughs> you know, but I'm sat in here playing Rocket League, shouting at people. So, yeah, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to, but yeah. Now, I've got How a question. How long did it take you to get good at Rocket League? Uh, I'm three and a half thousand hours in, but oh I think maybe... I'm gonna guess maybe 400 of those hours are probably me being AFK. Uh, no, no, no pun, <laughs> but me being AFK um, on that game, leaving it on overnight, maybe, I guess. So like, yeah, so I'm probably about 3000 hours of solid gameplay in. Uh, and I did play a little bit of P PlayStation before that, but that was extremely uh, casual, personally. Oh, okay. So yeah, but um, I've got a question which I've been asking everyone and I feel like everyone's got a different, a different answer to it. The first part of the question is who in music outside of dubstep would be like a dream collab for you? And we don't, we're not talking like, we're not talking like, you know, we go up to someone like Ed Sheeran and say, let's do a dubstep track. I'm talking, you can do a dubstep track or would you go, I want to write something in your style or would you write something completely different? Do you have anyone? I mean, I, I love pop music and I don't know. I was always obsessed with like in sync and shit when I was a little kid. Oh, really? Um, so I don't, either like Bieber or like Miley Cyrus. I think Bieber would be cool. I mean, Bieber Bieber is like a cool, a cool pop artist now. You know, he's not the cheesy kid yeah. with the swingy hair he used to be. I think he's got an edge now where he's very likable and a lot more uh, recognizable as a brand as opposed to a good-looking kid. You know, like, it's just, he's become so much more, I feel like. And I think I think he plays the piano and stuff now, right? I think I've seen videos of him playing piano and singing, so... Um, and playing guitar and stuff as well, so I feel like his brand is opening up, so I mean, I, I mean, you could probably do a, tr a track with Bieber, I don't know. But what, would you do dubstep? Would you do something else? I'd probably do something else. Would you sit in a big studio and just like, and write a really cool track for, for Justin Bieber? Or would you go, I want to do an AFK-style thing in this no, no, genre? No. Uh, <laughs> you were quick know. to say no on that one. <laughs> probably, probably not a, not a dubstep style. Yeah, yeah, no, like, yeah, just just writing something. You just want to be a part of the production of a Bieber track. Nothing specific, yeah. no AFK, just a cool track to come in. Yeah, maybe like a nice guitar pluck, R and B banger with live drums. <laughs> what about you? Who's your dream? I mean, I'm a big drum bass head, so you're talking someone like Noisier, for instance. Okay. But uh, I've I can't lie, I'm a big fan of Ed Sheeran. I can't lie, I'm a big fan of Ed Sheeran and Coldplay. Actually, I still have listen to seen... old Coldplay albums, and I still listen to Ed Sheeran. Have you seen Noisier's Patreon? I have, and Nick does some insane uh, productions. I, I need to actually, you know what? I've been meaning <laughs> I've been meaning to watch that because I really want to know some of the stuff that. He's been teasing clips of on his Instagram. Have you? Are you on it? I was. I haven't been on it for like two months, but man, the there was like an hour, an hour and a half like video only about Reese's. <laughs> that was insane. I need to watch that very badly. <laughs> My Reese's is like, I'm I'm the same as Doctor P. I do very old school saw Reese's detuned with some, you know, basic post processing. Yeah. I have. There's a few new artists actually who I've got signed to DPMO. Um, who are kind of insane. One of them's called Akuma and the other one's called Dr. Lobster. And their ability to do Reese's in a non-neuro way, we're not talking scoop with phasing and, you know, that really classic yeah. way. We're talking genuine, like, really well-amped, really well-processed. Yeah, I know who Ak Akuma is. Yeah. It's honestly crazy. crazy. I need to I need to learn more. Because the thing is, is, when I put stuff through guitar amps, you get, you get a distinct sound that you 
kind of add too much of. Like guitar guitar pedals can add a bit too much mid distortion, and that's not things you can post process. Yeah. To get rid of it. it's kind of just the sound, and I've done things before, you know in previous with guitar pedals. I actually used to, a lot of my old tracks actually, like Fifty Caliber Wizard Sleeve, were actually put the basses were put through guitar pedals. Actually, live guitar pedals. Damn. Um. So yeah, I used to I used to meddle with that because Reason was very closed off. But actually, what do you use? Are you, are you Ableton? Yeah, I'm Ableton. But what did you use before Ableton? Because obviously Ableton's fairly new-ish. I used to use Reason FL. I did. I had like the most stupid stuff. Like I would write melody intros and melodies in FL because I like the piano roll, and then I would bounce it to audio. I would make my basses in Thor and Maelstrom, and then I would like put it all together in Ableton. Oh, wait, okay. So, <laughs> so did you did you used to rewire in Reason? I I didn't like rewiring, so I would just resample. Yeah, that makes sense. For anyone watching uh, who doesn't make who doesn't know about the uh, the the, uh, the DAWs, which is the music making software. So rewiring is to use one software and then have it linked to another software. So like, let's say you like the sound engine from another one better than the one you're using. You'd then root it out and then do some other stuff. But the program I was talking about earlier called Reason, um, and uh, he was talking about was that it's, um, <clears throat> it's very, it was very closed off and it was kind of, you could only really use what was inside of Reason. It's, that's changed now, but uh, that's where I started as well. I wrote all Wizard Sleeve, 50 Caliber, Sovex, anything up to my my remix of Smoke and Mirrors. I don't even know if you know if you know that track, but that was the that and um. Wait, fuck. is that Smoke and Mirrors? What? I'm trying to remember. Like your my favorite song of yours was like I said it to you on time on Twitter, and you were like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> uh, I gotta figure out what it's called now. There was, was but Smoke and Mirrors is like. Was it Ho? Was it the Ho remix? People um, always point that one out. Swallow? Is that oh, Swallow, called? yeah. So basically, so yeah. Swallow is like, Swallow was like a version, Smoke and Mirrors was like the first version. Swallow was kind okay. of like a refixed. Yeah, because um, I remember they that. sounded similar. Yeah, they. it was kind of, it wasn't the same um, project at all, but it was, they, they came to me and was like, we love this track, we want you to do something similar. And the ideas I did were kind of okay, and I just thought, why not I just grab some of the noises <laughs> that I did in Smoke and Mirrors and just and just do something like that? But yeah, that was crazy. But I mean, that, that Smoke and Mirrors, that sort of Swallow era, that was like that was some of the first tracks I actually wrote on Cubase. Otherwise, everything else was was completely Reason. So yeah, I was a pure Reason boy at the time. But. You know, you can like. There's like a reason VST now that you can use in like Ableton and shit. What? And for only yeah. for only Ableton though, or was it just an no, open you, VST? No, you can use it in anything. Um, it's like a VST reason rack, and it's like you can use anything that's in reason. In what? Your I had no idea, dude. I might have to get Maelstrom back out, dude. Maelstrom was my was yeah. my go-to. All my old bases were Maelstrom, and some subtractor, but mainly Maelstrom. Danny's the one that told me about that shit because I found all my old Maelstrom and Thor patches and he was like, yeah, you know, you can just use them. There's like a VST. I was like, what? Oh, dude, Cookie was a big Thor guy as well. Cookie was a huge Thor guy, actually. I never got on with Thor. Thor was my kind of like what I wrote like effects noises on for some reason. I could really never make any cool bases on it. Kind of weird. I don't think I ever applied myself to it, to be fair, but, but yeah. Damn, I, I, I kind of miss those days, though. It, Reason felt so much more simple to me when I was writing on it. The things just felt a bit more fun. I used to write all my drums on on a reed drum, or red rum, or murder backwards, whatever you want to call it. But I used to write all my, all my stuff on there, and I would just program the beats, you know, over that, over that little beat loop section at the bottom. So, like, everything was just so easy for me in drums, but now I'm on the Cubase, so, like, everything's drawn into a grid. So it's not quite as uh, <laughs> it's not quite as organic. So yeah, it's just uh, it's weird. But was there a reason why you moved to Ableton though, from from all of your all, everything else you were using at the time? I don't know. I just always liked the inner like the interface and the layout in Ableton, but I don't know. I just I just I don't I've... even remember what version it was when I was using it, like seven. But why is it Ableton Six. blew up though? Why did they, why did everyone pretty much just step over to Ableton? What was it that changed it? Because I have no idea. I don't know what it is either. Because I I mean you use it. I've I've dabbled in it, but I don't like I've never used it and gone okay right that's it. 
I'm gone. I'm going to Ableton right now. Like, it's, I've never had that before. I don't know what it is, but I don't know. There's nothing for me. There's nothing really distinguishable, distinguishable from the sound engine, from the output of it. Oh, the so. sound engine sounds like shit to me. Like... <laughs> Maybe it's very tolerable. Maybe it's good for EDM because a lot of producers go, "Here's the master, wang," and just like fl throw it up and make it loud. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a matter. Okay, uh, here's another part of the question I, I think uh, is is kind of hard. And you might have to think about it. But who do you, who in music do you think deserves more props? We're not talking underground producers. We're talking people that are known, but could probably be bigger. In dubstep? I don't know. I think in music in general. I think I was saying, talking to uh, to Yax in the first episode about music, and I think despite how big and how rich he is and how how much he's probably sold how many streams he's done i feel like dj snake doesn't quite get the love i think he deserves because yeah. that style of vocal chop that he brought in which obviously skrillex was a big pioneer of the, the way dj snake brought it into in a more dance floor way i don't think has been recognized enough because a lot of people have used that, that dj snake style yeah Dude, I hear him, I don't know if it's just America, but it, like on the radio, he's constantly on the radio yeah. here, like yeah, mainstream yeah. radio. Yeah, he is here, honestly, but um, he's European as well, though, so I guess he's like, he's always going to get some love from over here, but yeah, is there anyone you, you, think, you can think of that thinks like, yeah, I mean, he kind of did that thing and he should be more known for that thing? I'm not saying DJ Snake should be bigger, because obviously he's massive, but I'm saying he could be more recognized for what he's brought to music with that style he brought, you know? Possibly, I don't know. I don't know, let me think about it for a minute. <laughs> How are you doing as well, by the way? Are you, are you kidding people? I don't... I'm not... Oh yeah, last game I had four gold. gold <laughs> I didn't even check. I was getting a lot of kills as Arissa, but... I think, she's my, I think she's my favorite tank. I think when I play Reinhardt, I like it, but if I don't get any protection, it's kind of pointless. Reinhardt is boring as hell. Like, yeah, he can be. Definitely. I used to play him, like main him, and like like mid master rank and he's so annoying to have to play yeah but he's kind of like a necessity sometimes yeah i think i think the problem but the problem with reinhardt is even if you carry like you you have to rely on your dps's to do all the damage and if they if they suck then the game's done basically but then again i think like if i'd gone dps oh we might have won but then you think maybe well, but then maybe the reinhardt would have sucked <laughs> and it doesn't so it doesn't matter so i don't know Oh. Oof. Is that sniper? Get back here. Come on now. There we go. Here comes Ryan, baby. Ow. Wait, why me? <laughs> why did he waste his Q on just me? He just queued me for some reason, yeah. <laughs> Oh man. I'm assuming off the dome then, the question got you shook. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. I only think I only think is a uh, think of it as a question because I've thought about it in previous situations and talked about like DJ Snake to other people and just loads of stuff like that really and it's just something that okay, I shouldn't have popped my cue there. Oh actually did I kill someone? I did. Yeah, I mean, he's he's one of many names I think that deserves a lot more props. I still think Noisier should be essentially bigger uh, than they yeah, are, just for how good they are. Maybe Noisier, then. That's probably who I would pick. Because they're just like... They're gods. Yeah. They are gods amongst men, dude. They really are. Uh, for anyone watching as well, Noisier being uh, these Dutch producers um, who write anything from dubstep to drum the main artistry is like drum and bass but they've dabbled in loads of stuff they've done they've done like uh the soundtracks to, to games like devil may cry um and other games as well they've done soundtracks i think to movies as well or something like that but yeah it's just it's just it's one of those names where you think like they should just be the biggest names in history because they just are the most insane music producers and, and their ability to engineer music is just so crazy it's one of those artists that everyone looks up to and goes, "I wish I was as good as those guys. <laughs> I wish I could, I could. I wish I could engineer a kick and a snare as well as they do." <laughs> oh, 
Christ. What music do you listen to outside of, uh, you know, dubstep, for instance? Dude, I got, like, obsessed with drum and bass this year. I Maybe because I was... I would, like, ride my bike, like, 10 miles a day. Mm. And that tempo is, like, the perfect... Yes. Like, to pedal a bike to down a trail. It's, like, the ultimate vibe. I know. And you know what's amazing as well? Is if you're, if you're doing, like, a comfortable jog, drum and bass is, like, the exact speed of your feet. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of insane. Um, I would try to, like, match my right foot going down on the pedal to the snare every time and it's like just flying yeah <laughs> uh do you okay do you have a theory as to why drama bass isn't bigger in america i mean i think because there's no like simple dance move for the people to do to it like I can't even remember dubstep pre headbanging now. Like <laughs> that's kind of true, actually. It I can't drives lie. me nuts. Like yeah. I'm like, what did they used to do? Like I yeah. can't. I agree. I do think about that. I do think. I do think. Like I watch old videos of like, let's say 2018, 17, which by the way is a lot further away than people remember. It's nearly five years away now. Uh, 2017, for instance. But I watch videos and there's still people headbanging it. I'm like, wait, wait what happened before this? Because I don't. Did people just jump? Like what happened? Like. I don't. I don't remember. It's like it's so weird. Like it's head banging, dude. I don't know where head banging came from. I honestly don't know where. I know mosh pits was the start of it, but I don't understand why head banging entered the field, entered the chat. Quite honestly, it's so weird how. Okay, so here's another thing as well. Are you a metal head? Are you a big metal head? No. So a lot of producers in, in dubstep, particularly, are massive metal heads. Yeah, and I, I think the energy of metal translates really well to the energy of dubstep, and that's where it comes from. I'm exactly the same. So if that's yeah. the case, you're not a metalhead. What was your what was your musical love before dubstep? Because uh, I know you I said pop, just like, but like I think my progression into dubstep was just like because I started listening to like trance, I guess, in like 2005, and yeah. then went to electro house and then fidget do you remember fidget it yeah. was basically like I see. okay <laughs> i guess just the sound design aspect of it is what eventually led me to dubstep that's interesting like that makes sense because fidget is a bit more energy. when you if you were to say you went from like trance to dubstep i'd be like how did that even happen but yeah, yeah fidget i can take it because there's a little more a bit more of a bouncy energy that's still quite a jump i think but like there's old jack beats and that kind of stuff was like really like wobbly like yeah wobble sounds and then old rusco just kind of like i have I to win know, this fight I got obsessed with that sound rusco so was rusco who was okay who was the first person you listened to and liked in dubstep because i didn't like dubstep when i first heard it i actually wrote all my biggest tracks i wrote when i hated dubstep i should just start hating it again <laughs> I guess the first dubstep song I ever heard was Rock the Bells Jakes at Oof. South by Southwest, like 2007 or 8. It's a fine entry into dubstep, can't lie. Can't lie. Then, I, but I didn't know what it was then. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what the fuck? That song was sick. I don't know what that was. <laughs> and then I saw 16 bit play and I was like, oh, it was definitely this kind of shit. And then. I guess Rusco Pro Nails was the first like actual song that I knew what it was that I was obsessed with. Damn, Rock the Bells is a fine example <laughs> of a, of a dubstep track. I can't lie, Jake's Jake's again, Jake's being another one that deserves so much more. Dude, in old old Hinch was like, like, do you remember Giant? Yeah, of course, dude. I was I was in the area. I was in the area. The area. The era, the era of those era. guys, dude. I grew up with the, the era of those guys when when dubstep was coming up. I was coming up with them, and it was like I was a part of it, dude. I had that dub, I had those dub plates before they came released. I remember playing them in clubs, and everyone was like, "Yo, yo, yo!" Like trying to look at my CD wallet for the track names and stuff like that. Like it's crazy, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, Hench, Hench is one of those names that you know you can forever have good memories for because there's so much good music, so many good artists on it. It's kind of insane. I oh. think that era and like early circus era were my favorite. What, like, but what what drew you, what drew you to those eras 
and that style the most. I think Circus was very bouncy and happy-ish. I, I mean, obviously, because, I it. Yeah, it was... I, I guess all the songs back then, to me, had, like, their own vibe, and, like, nothing really sounded the same. Stuff seemed to have, like like soul to it i don't know like old brown and gammon and shit. yeah like, yeah i know what you mean yeah i know what you mean i think but i think and, i don't know if that's anything to do with the tracks themselves it could have just been the era and because it was so yeah. fresh at the time you know like the nostalgia of that idea of something being so fresh it's like chasing the dragon in a sense it's like i want that again i want the feeling of hearing drumstick vip in a club again like, oh my god yes. <laughs> i want the feeling of it dude one of my favorite memories is hearing jake's warface vip Hatcher was playing it in a club in Brighton, and I remember I, I could have jumped him. I swear to God, I was so hyped from the track I just heard. I was so hyped, and I was, and that memory is like so huge. But is it that track wouldn't bang in a club now as much? Yeah. And it's like, not. and it's that that whole new aspect, isn't it? It's it's the nostalgia of it and something being new and fresh. And I think that's obviously why dubstep ended up not really carrying on on the same flow it had originally. Because it was so overkill and everything just started melding into one. Like, for instance, when Skrillex came along, and obviously no hate to Skrillex at all because this man pioneered. I'm saying everyone who copied and did that Skrillex sound saturated yeah. the scene so heavily, where it, you know, along with it, things like Major taking it on and stuff like that, just overkilled dubstep and just made it too much. Really, just just threw it in everyone's faces constantly over and over again. So, yeah, I don't know, but. It's a, it's a it's a crazy one. I mean, I'm glad the dubstep's back. I mean, I say dubstep's back as if we just come back, but you know, dubstep was in a bad way for a long time. For instance, 2000, and I'm gonna say 13 or 14 EDC, literally had, I think, two or three artists on it for dubstep. I think it was like, I think 12th Planet, Datsik, and Destroyed. And Destroyed aren't even dubstep, really. It's technically like, yeah. and I remember thinking. Damn, is this really happening? <laughs> is this really going down? And it's like, mm. but it needed to happen. I think dubstep became a main genre um, yeah, because of the because of the explosion like of Skrillex. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. I think it's definitely a main genre. You know, you get you get drum and bass, you know, dubstep, and stuff like that. So it's it's part of the it's part of the culture now. But I I almost think the death was a good thing, honestly. Because I mean, where would we be? If things hadn't just petered out and people had started filtering off into other genres and new people came in and made it fresh. You it know. would have been like EDM trap kind of or something because <laughs> that shit's gone now. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah, it kind of is. You know what's weird? Like trap and Moombaton were so popular oh, yeah, in yeah. such a short amount of time, but they disappeared in just as quick as they came. And it's like, what happened to that? But how do you expand on Moombaton? Like, there was some really cool stuff I liked at the time. I even wrote and released a track of Moombaton on Circus. But, like, what happened to that genre? Why did that die? I mean, there was no... Who were the main frontrunners of, of Moombaton? There was people repping it, like, Dylan Francis repped it. And Flosherdamas yeah. played some. And then... Who else? And I think that's the problem, isn't it? Where, who were the poster boys for Moombaton keeping it alive? Dylan Francis wasn't technically a Moombaton guy. He was just an EDM guy. Yeah. So, I don't know. There is a lot, I think there's a lot of secret sauce to, to keeping game, uh, games? What am I talking about? To keeping genres alive. I think it's poster boys. I think there's a lot of poster boys need to happen. Think about all the poster boys for dubstep, Skrillex obviously being one of them. That's always going to be the case, whether he never writes a dubstep song ever again, he's still going to be known as a dubstep artist, but... Yeah. There's always going to be the main poster boys. I feel like Void and Sudden Death is becoming... In, in our age, one of the poster boys. Um, and there's so many names you can just you can just point point out for dubstep. Like, who are the main guys? Excision. You know, it's, it's like all those sort of things. Subtronics is now doing his own thing. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Subtronics, Danny, and Murata. Yeah, exactly. And they're, like and they're all different age. styles as well. Completely different styles. Um, and that's the thing. Like, it's the poster boys of their, of their part of the dubstep that are keeping them sections alive. And it's all those sections. It's almost like Power Rangers. I don't know if you've watched Power Rangers. They put their badges together and it's one me one mega Tyrannosaurus, you know? It's like, yeah. same thing with, with Dubstep. You've got all the poster boys doing their thing and everyone's uh, killing it and it's making Dubstep as a whole a greater genre. And it's like, that never happened in a lot of, in a lot of genres that I can personally remember that kept that genre... Trap, there were, who was the main Trap guys? Flosherdamus, 
You could argue Carnage was part of that festival trap. Yeah, Carnage. I mean, who else? There was this dude, Luminox, who was pretty fire, but... See, I've I never heard of Luminox, was... and I think the problem with that is, like, that's initially the problem. We we couldn't, off the bat, reel off a bunch of names, and it's not because we're not trap eyes, it's because there weren't poster boys, were there, for that, for that genre to keep it alive. So... Yeah. It's just things I've never really thought of. Just trying, I'm just flying it off the brain, but... I guess Bauer was trapped, wasn't he? Yeah, I think... I guess so. I mean, obviously, Harlem Shake <laughs> was a different type of... It was, was it even trap? I don't know. I, I don't know what the hell you call that, but... That definitely set the tone for that... For that stuff, but... It's funny, because I remember having that song, like, before the, like, madness blew up around it, and I was like, that was never something I would have played in a club. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's weird, like, I don't, I don't know what setting that even sits in. Yeah, I don't either. I have no idea what setting that sits in. Does it, it doesn't go in a cheesy club, because it's not quite cheesy enough. It doesn't go, well, I mean, maybe now that it kind of blew up over, like, TikTok or Vine or whatever it was at the time. But, like... Where, it doesn't go in in a, a trap club. No one, no one in trap will play that now. Um, it's in this weird limbo, but it did the drop. It did the drop at the time. I don't know. It's weird. Maybe that was the appeal. Maybe it was just so weird and different that it just worked. I don't know. That's another thing as well. I feel like it's really easy to overcomplicate or overthink things in genres. You know, like. Where does that sit in the genre? Or what style of genre is that? Or, you know, like, what subgenre is that? And it's like, it's just, essentially, it's just a guy who wrote, wrote a track in a room. <laughs> who had no yeah. idea what he was doing. It's just like... And I think things like that is... I mean, technically a bad thing, isn't it? If you overanalyze music and you try and you try and categorize it... I mean, categorizing is good in a folder of accountancy. But in music, do we really need to know if something's future garage rhythm speed bungalow? You know, like, I don't, like, just enjoy it, you know, sometimes. it's I know it's not as simple as that, but that's effectively what we would all like to, to have in music. So, I don't know. Ooh, that Reaper needs to die. I think I'm dying from the right side. I don't know, music is a... Uh, Music is just it's, uh, it's just a whole different beast, dude. Like you could just ramble on about music for a, for days on end about who should be bigger and subgenres that shouldn't exist and should exist and where do you put? You know, it's like this is the things that like producers do all the time as well. Have you ever written a track where you're like, what genre is this? Or what would you call this? Have you ever done that? Yeah. Yeah, and then I don't put it out, which I probably should have. Exactly, and that's the problem, isn't it? Like, why did, Why is it because we have to put something in a folder of accountancy? <laughs> I don't know what I'm calling it. But why is it because we decided one day that this should be a thing we can do and say and put into a into a pigeonhole because it sounds a bit different from the usual, but effectively it's probably upset. You know, things like that. Like, why do we yeah. do that to ourselves? I don't know. We don't need to. I got to. to write music for a video game this year, which was, like, my... Wow. One of my, like, life goals, I guess. Yeah, one of mine for and sure. that shit, like, made it feel fresh again because, like, you the You had guy, a purpose. Yeah, and they were like... Don't write this from the perspective that you're like Jimmy the dubstep DJ. Write it from like I don't know. It was just it was challenging. So yeah, definitely made it feel fresh again for a minute. You had you had a purpose to write to. It's not like I'm gonna release this. It's gonna go on Spotify. I hope it has. I hope it gets a thousand plays in a day. You know, it's like it's like you have a purpose for it now. People are gonna hear this, and it doesn't matter. It's gonna yeah. sit in a menu, and people are gonna enjoy it from there. It's gonna be someone's memory one day. You know, it could be like. The music from FIFA, for instance, every year, I feel like FIFA nail it. EA nail music in FIFA. Like, when someone thinks, like, my childhood, oh, do you remember Do you remember 2012 FIFA? Oh, man, do you remember that track on 2012 FIFA? Like, I always associate sure. tracks to games. Like, yeah. I discovered the Deftones on the old Tony Hawk's games when I was younger, and uh, uh, with Dave Mirror BMX as well. Oh, my God, I remember that game. Slim Jim, dude, Slim Jim, let's go. The classic.
And uh, yeah, I, f I discovered so much music on games. I don't know if... I don't know if music is as... I don't know. Discoverable on games as much as they used to be. Um, I used to just be a kid and not know what I liked. And would just go, oh, that sounds cool on this game. Who's that band? Yeah. I don't know if that's maybe the case anymore because music is so easily accessible and uh you know we're smothered in music aren't we you can press you can press shuffle on spotify and suddenly you've discovered six billion genres in three hours it's like we don't get that discoverability as much anymore on games i don't feel like so yeah i don't know but yeah the old school games do oh frick oh Trying to get that. Trying to get him dead. Oh, he's being healed. Oh, no. I still got my cube. We're going to get some power ups. <laughs> how, was your, uh, how was your life during Corona? I'm not trying to be the guy that goes, Corona, Corona, Corona. But, like, how was your life during Corona? It was fine because I, I mean, I didn't really do, like, I wasn't like a social person anyway. So, yeah. I, I don't think I would have got my shit together if it wasn't for getting like forced to be in quarantine and analyze myself <laughs> yeah i hear that so i'm yeah. not complaining i think it for me i became a twitch streamer <laughs> yeah. i genuinely just became a twitch streamer and just i just that was the that was my way to earn money and it actually saved me um so yeah i'm eternally grateful for for twitch but yeah well that's that's man that that hour went quick i felt like we played three games i'm not joking yeah <laughs> the, the queue times because i was playing dps i know i can't believe it um well dude i very much very very much appreciate you being on the show uh is there anything you'd like to plug anything you'd like to pull uh, uh shout outs for any any mates any managers anyone not really thanks for having me though <laughs> my managers suck and my agents are bastards there you go <laughs> all right thanks so much jimmy appreciate it mate and uh guys thanks so much for getting involved in another beautiful episode of new games presented by fun case uh, of course i've been fun case uh, i'll see you guys again next week for another episode um i will be on tour so there's a possibility this might be uh, a different setup to what we have now obviously this is a green screen setup but uh yeah thanks so much for getting involved in episode four i'll see you guys again soon for the next special guest who i'm uh, keeping you know keeping up here nice and secret and uh yeah see you again soon stay golden have a good one